so controlling, and when he lost control of this woman, when she finally moved out, took the family, he just said, that's it, I'm done, and I'm going to do the ultimate act of control, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. I, I would say, uh, Dr. Tessa, that that's not a surprising event when a woman gets out the restraining order, finally leaves, that's a very dangerous moment. Oh, absolutely, and when you look at the history in, in uh, 2000, and you look at in, in February, Karen fears that, that he was, uh, you know, homicidal, that he was getting tape, and he was going to you know, probably strangle her or do something really horrible. She was scared to death. And then March, uh, he signs over money to her because he's he's has problems in terms of money being uh, in his name, so he puts it into Karen's name. And then, you know, you go on to July where he finally kills her. The, the, all those events leading to her death, um, you can see that the man is so afraid of abandonment when she says that she wants a divorce, when she says that the, there's a restraining order, the man is so fearful and almost irrational, but I don't believe the man was irrational at all. Disturbed, yes. Insane, no. Did he have a really, really tough childhood? You know something, when someone's dead, I don't want to know about his childhood, although I understand it very well, given, given his dynamics. But nevertheless, he did something and he was in full, he understood and he knew exactly what he was doing. Was he in a rage, an irrational rage in ways? Absolutely. But you don't just go get a gun, you don't, you know, park 300 feet, et cetera, and so, come up. So when and, you say you don't want to know what, he, what happened in his childhood, then you don't buy the notion that we are hearing a lot of, that you really do carry over some sort of mental disease or defect from that kind of thing that will make you act. Oh, no question about it. No question question about it. The man had a tremendous disturbance. I mean, when you're hit every day with a baseball bat by your father and your mother is standing by watching, you have, and then he, he cross-dresses. The cross-dressing has to do with the fact that one day he was beaten up so badly he hid in the bathroom and he finds his sister's underwear. His sister was the only one who wasn't abused by this, this monster, his father, and he puts on the underwear and all of of a sudden feels warm and and cared for in some way and safe you have to look at this man and and say he really has a deep-seated problem every single day of his life his brother was almost yeah. murdered you know by by the father as well but nevertheless it brings you up to a marriage where in fact um, the connection was so intense but remember on their honeymoon he was abusive to oh, his yeah. new wife yeah well I'll tell you what we've got some interesting sound bites more to take on this on the other side and later Martha Stewart finally answers those questions we've all been asking like 